All right, at this time, along with the band, I'd like to do a thing we call Live at Home. Never, never. You can't stray. You can't stray from the target. If your channel name is "Stay on Target," you know that's just that's just no option. How's it going, party people? How are you doing tonight? Getting in with the sly subliminals already. With the sly disses. Phew. Good to know. Good to see you all out here. It's been a while since uh, since my last stream. Last one was uh, the one w that we did for the museum, for the computer museum in Cambridge. Adequate. I'm also adequate. I'm uh, I'm maintaining. What's happening in local Wonderboy news? Local Wonderboy news says that on today, the 17th of November 2020, Wonderboy has in fact turned into Lion Man. You can see that on the status screen. I mean, like three or four weeks ago, what was it? That's that's already when he when he turned into Lion Man. But uh, time time really has no meaning, does it? Hmm. So yeah, sorry for not uh, being on here very much. Been uh, been super super busy. I'm actually not less busy now, but it just didn't feel right to keep these streams waiting for too long. I might just do one hour stream instead of the usual two hour stream. Let's just see how it goes, right? Let's see how hooked I get and how much fun it is to interact with you lot again. Lion-O, like in Thundercats, yeah. Thundercats. I was just trying to think of the theme song, but my own theme music is, uh, has repressed it. Thunderpants, ho! I think on the very, on the, on the very, on the very first, on the very first uh, video wizards podcast, we uh, we dropped some uh, some Thundercats, Thundercats guitar shredding in there. So many hoes and no pimps. Mm. Let's see. Somebody said something that uh, got auto auto modded. All right. Term. Ad permitted term hope him so. I like, hey, Epic Da Vinci, how's it going? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the theme song. So yeah, yeah. This, uh, this, this mug, right? Reason why I might just only be streaming um, one hour tonight is because I'm way overdue editing the uh, new video with this podcast. It's almost December, and we haven't put out the November uh, podcast out yet. Shameful, but yeah, busy times. So instead of waffling on and on and on, let me just uh, cut the music out and get started. There we go. That's that taken care of. Bring the Elgato. What? Yeah, there we go. 
I got it all mixed up again. Alright. Yeah, all set. November issue on the 15th of December. You know how this works. <laughs> yeah. No, it doesn't work that way. I've been very uh, diligent to get it out on the first Monday of the month. Most for most of the year. So this, uh, this feels a bit, a bit off. But uh, yeah, we had a lot of other obligations. So. Something I had to give. Like it usually does. Uh, brrr, I have one key. I have nothing. No fireballs. No tornadoes. No arrows. No boomerangs and no thunder. Thundercats are on the move. Thundercats are loose. Bowels. Yeah, the guitar riff, right? That's it. That's what we. That's what we included in the video with this podcast in the in the very first one, episode number zero. So what I'm thinking is. I think there is a, a changing room here somewhere. I think this is the one. I'm gonna change into Mouse Man and buy a bunch of elixirs. That's it, right? Yep, secret door. And here's a changing room. I can't believe I remember that from, what was it, almost a month ago. Video games are good for you. Video games uh, help you to. Uh, Keep your mind sharp. If I wouldn't be playing the odd video game every now and then, I would be much more forget forgetful than I am now. I'm sure of it. Wait, was it? What was I saying? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's go and get some elixirs and then do the lion man thing. Of course. Of course, we need Mouseman to even get over here. The whole thing came flooding back. How have you been uh, doing Epic Da Vinci? Thanks for the shout out on Twitter uh, recently. That was uh, I really appreciated that. So tonight we're playing Case of Zero's favorite game. Continuing a pl the playthrough, as a matter of fact. So how far above God of War 2 do you rate this one, Case of Zero? I mean, it's obviously in a higher tier, but... Just how far... How high a tier above this one? He's played this over anything, right? Yeah. That's what I figured. Word has it that uh, k -Sub also really loves lasers in his shoot 'em ups Especially the type that will just uh, hit scan, insta-kill you. He's all over that. Oh yeah, I think this is the, the door that I need to go through. The sex minigame. Aw oh man, do you have to say that? With this cutesy innocent looking game? Oh, I don't want to think about that. Get that pervy ish out of here. Oh! Stabbed him right in the pooper. <laughs> Playing with fire there, big guy. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That's what we do. Transform into John Holmes, man. Who is John Holmes? What host snorkers? Are you coming with all the obscure um, UK pop culture references that I need Ben Cartledge to help me out with on the Video Wizards podcast. I mean, that's... that's Video Wizards for me is like a cultural exchange program. I, I'm learning new stuff about UK pop culture. Every damn recording we do. Stuff that I didn't even want to know about. So excuse me if I'm not up on all your... all your references. John Holmes. No relation to Sherlock. Okay, another Holmes. I bet Hayes Hill knows what you're talking about. One credit where it's due. There he is. Mr. One Credit Classics. Good stuff on that uh, Goku Joe Parodius clear, man. I just uh, got the, uh, the the Saturn ports of all those games in and, you know, dabbled a little bit with them. They're no joke. Just because they look cute and sometimes even a little bit disturbing doesn't mean that they're... That much easier than the uh, Gradius games. 
A distressing advert on the telly. Yeah, quick, get your uh, get your mind off of that. Uh, yeah, you heard sex minigame, yeah. Um, no. What ho snorkers said something about a John Holmes, and I have no idea who he's talking about, so I figured I figured you might you might know what he's talking about. Because you're also British. Ah, uh, tell me who John Holmes was. Hey Suits, how's it going? Squids Nice one. Hope you're well, Suits. You know, considering, all things considered. John Holmes, the name does sound familiar. Oh, they were, he was a comedian? So I recently watched a... Um, a few clips from the UK office again, which I love. Um, and it was the bit where... Uh, David Brent does the whole Eric Hitchmo, of course, the Eric Hitchmo impression with the, uh, I don't agree with that in the workplace. Um, and then he does some sort of impression of, of an, a, a UK comedi comedian at the end, very badly. Only me! But I forgot the name who that comedian was. That was another UK uh, comedian. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Only me! I'm trying to Im do a bad impersonation of a bad impersonation of David Brent of that particular community. Harry Enfield, that's the one. Word up. Harry Enfield, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> I watched it and I had to look that up, who er Harry Enfield was, because I had no idea why he was ma making such a weird face. And uh, yeah, that's comedy of an acquired taste, I think. The annoying dad character. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one, yeah. Now I do not believe you wanted to do that. <laughs> Yo! So right now I'm just on a mission. We've seen this uh, scenario before. I'm just on a mission to buy some elixirs. What's the gold situation? Not bad. 1,336. Yeah, that's the thing. So excuse me while I'm catching up on all my uh, UK pop culture. That's why Epic Da Vinci, if uh, you do quizzes that aren't video game related and are have to do with UK pop culture, I'm probably uh, I'm probably not joining. It take it will take me uh, 20 years of video with this podcast to to catch up with all of that. Because yes, Video Wizards covers every month in the 1980s and 1990s, at least once. So we got at least 20 more years worth of shows, or no, almost, like, let's say 19 year more years of shows left in us. There's something so cathartic about the Wonder Boy games, just the, that whole stabby stabby action. It's like chunky solid platforming with, with a lot of stabbing going on. Ask questions about Ruth Gullet. Yeah. I know who that is. <laughs> but he's also become uh, part of UK pop culture, right? I mean, he uh, wasn't, he co wasn't he coaching uh, a UK team as well? And he was on uh, UK television shows? Harry Enfield, Frank Doberman clips, gotcha. Mm. Two unlimited. Did you know that there is a Super Nintendo game, a shoot 'em up, a side scrolling shoot 'em up, by Athena called Biometal? And the uh, US and European version of that has a two unlimited OST. The, the original Japanese version has a very different OST, but basically has a two unlimited OST. I can't wait till we uh, till we discuss that on video with it in the month that uh, that came out because it's a uh, it's an interesting cure here. I think the publisher was Activision for the West, and they must have figured, yeah, we need to do something. We need to do something here to make this 
generic Japanese shoot 'em up stand out? How about an OST by the hottest act in the charts right now? Too unlimited. Fun tunes. Yeah, it's not exactly my thing. I have a, I have a thing against uh, Eurodance stuff from the from the 1990s. No amount of nostalgia is going to make me feel better about uh, that music. There's no limit, you reach for the sky! I had to do a... Uh, we, we On Kenny Rinse we did uh, a uh, podcast on Jet Force Gemini not too long ago. And you, as you might know, you have to, s you have to rescue a bunch of... Uh, Koala like Ewok like white bears called the tribals in that game. So I had to do a two unlimited tribal dance impression at the beginning of the show. So I think that that one is out now for non Patreons. So you just have to start at the beginning of the podcast and you'll uh, hear me do my best Anita from Two Unlimited impression uh, on it. Much better than what I just what I did did right here. Target demographic, yeah. Yeah, her name was Anita. Anita Doth. The guy, uh, Ray, he was a uh, bit of a hip-hop aficionado, actually. I don't think his heart was in doing the, the rap parts on uh, on 2 Unlimited, uh, on the on the, on the Euro Trash uh, or Euro Dance songs. So when, he, when that whole 2 Unlimited deal stopped, he took the money and started his own rap label. And started his own uh, solo rap career as well. Which was trash, to be honest. Total trash. Wasn't much better. And that that's coming from somebody who uh, is, uh, is into hip-hop as well. A Manga Boys poster over your bed, though. What kind of fibs are you telling now? I think you're, you're talking caca right now. That never happened. Never. Alright, so I got my three elixirs. Um, let's, yeah, let's change into Lion Man again. Bang! Oh, that's Piranha Man. He's badass, though. But I need to be Lion Man. There we go. Because only Lion Man has the power to swing down with his sword and break blocks below him. The other, the other transformations can't do that. They can't swing their sword downwards. Like this. You know what I mean? Pachoo, pachoo, pachoo. Okay, so, um, all joking aside, this, uh, this bit is going to be, uh, pretty tough. From what I recall. Was this the hole? Was that the correct hole? I think so. Yeah, this is the way. I, I mean, this part is not especially tough yet, but... Then we get... There's a lot of Mouse Man stuff here as well. wonder what that's all about. No, definitely don't return. Um, yeah, then we get to the Ninja Castle. Ah! Okay. Crap. I have to return now. Yeah, then we get to the ninja castle, and that's where uh, things started getting a little bit crazy. Can somebody please comment something else? Because I keep seeing uh, Kesup's Venga Boys comment, uh, the last the last one being there, and it uh, disturbs me. That is a big cat, yeah. A cat with a sword. No, I missed out on the gold. You ain't lying. Eh? 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 <laughs> Big old cat face. He's a he's a chunky cat. He's one of those lazy lazy cats, male jungle cats that uh, let the females do the hunting for him. This stream is the main event. It does disturb me. Yeah, terrible. But I guess I had it coming when uh, I started talking about insta kill. 
Hit scan lasers. There's just some some lines you do not cross. Nice man. Yeah, Kenny Rins is not too bad. There's a reason why uh, I wanted to get on as a panel member. But uh, you you probably won't hear me talk about those kind of topics much on uh, on Kenny Rins, because I usually get to talk about stuff like this. You know, there's not a whole lot of um, there's not a whole lot to discuss about uh, the sexuality and struggles of the main character in uh, in Wonder Boy 3. At least I don't think so. There's not a whole lot. Not a whole lot in that, in terms of that, uh, to work with, with this game. So yeah, this, these are the types of games I tend to be paneling for on Kena Rins. So yeah, I don't get to flex my uh, sensitive, artistic, and intellectual muscle that much. Lion romance is a complicated thing. You're right. Yeah. Maybe if we do eventually cover Wonder Boy series and Wonder Boy 3 maybe I will have to uh, say a few few things about that ah uh, but good stuff good to uh, good to know you're uh, you like you like yourself some uh, you like yourself some cleaning rinse ooh the blue ghosts wait there was nothing there yikes I think if I would have would not have swung my sword, my shield would have protected me. Yeah. It's always a bit tricky to find out which shield guards against which projectiles. Ooh. T finished. And I might have to get up out of my chair from time to time time to access the menu in this game, but I'm not going to walk all the way down to put the kettle on. During the stream, that would be uh, that would be taking the mic, which is a a good British expression, if I'm not mistaken. Taking the mic, right? Taking the mic, indeed. I first heard about that in, uh, expression when I uh, went to Nepal with, together with my brother, and we were in the in the south uh, doing a jungle safari on elephants, and there was a British couple, and the woman was wearing awfully loud colored pants, you know, like uh, god awful, like like those kind of club type pants with uh, yeah. Like the the the, thi the thin ones with a lot of crazy shouting colors on there, and the guide was telling us about that you shouldn't wear bright colors in the jungle because rhinos will get uh, if we take a walk through the jungle because rhinos will get very upset when they see those uh, loud colors. And she was uh, she was asking what did he say again? So I told her yeah, I, you know rhinos will get very upset when they see your pants. Oh okay okay she said and because uh, and then I told her. Yeah, because uh, they have a—they're very sensitive to fashion. They have a very, uh, a very um, discriminate sense uh, sense of fashion, and uh, yeah, she 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 could laugh about that, and her husband as well. Uh, but then my brother, at the same time, was wearing this ridiculous tropical helmet that some friends of mine gave us as a joke before we left there. And he was actually wearing that when we went to the jungle. He looked like a colonizer, pretty much, with his uh, khaki-colored uh, uh, or beige-colored tropical helmet. So her husband said, like, looked at my brother and he said, "Someone wearing a hat like that shouldn't take the mick out of anyone," which was a good retort. Pith helmets in the attic, nice. Yeah, I bet you do. You have all sorts of disguises. I've seen you. I've seen you in your streams. <laughs> like the hunter out of Jumanji, exactly. A whim away. Yeah. <laughs> Vince McMahon would book this line to Mall Peter Packard, definitely. That's what you want. No Lion Man costume. There's nothing. There's nothing some. Uh, you know, a little bit of creativity and some uh, 
paper mache will uh, will not do to remedy remedy that. Ugh. Shenanigans, malarkey. <laughs> paper mache for the win. Oof. Oh, he's not he's not showing himself anymore now. Sneaky bastard. Don't 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 No. Oh. They're going to make me use my elixir right now, right here and right now. Harsh knockback. Yeah, I love that, man. Uh, I saw you. I saw you did. I was mad at myself for missing the first hour of the stream, because I caught your tweet like one hour in or something. Like ultimate parody is what? What? Ben is streaming parodies, and I just got. You know, I just got really got those. Uh, oh, look at look at that paltry elixir refill. Yeah, another heart. There go my elixirs. What a brilliant start of the evening. You gotta love it. Two hearts refill. What what is this RNG BS with uh, with those elixirs? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really into those games as well, and so I I just you know when I took a break from podcast editing, I had to I just had to uh, catch up on that. Okay, this means I lost all my elixirs. All the stuff that I did with Mouseman to actually buy them was for naught. So now we're going to have to brave the ninja castle without uh, without any extra resources. Some old BS, if you ask me. Parodius is great, right? That uh, I think that. That seems like something right up your alley, what host Norkers, Parodius, and all the uh, insanity. Bit uh, Python esque in places, uh, one might even say. Ninja Guiding Castle, yeah. But they're so, so chock full of personality and charm, those games are. And just plain old insanity. See, I've been uh, playing some Gokujo, like uh, the one that Ben cleared yesterday. Uh, the original I I had for the Super Nintendo already for a while, uh, but that's on the on the on the deluxe pack on the Saturn as well. It's a compilation with uh, Parodius Da and uh, Goku Joe Parodius, basically the first two Super Nintendo Parodius games, but then the arcade versions of that. Then uh, Jikyo Oshaberi Parodius, aka Chatting Parodius, in which a Japanese comedian keeps yelling at you uh, while you're playing. And then uh, Sexy Parodius, which is a very sexy, incredibly sexy game. As you might imagine, involving all sorts of, uh, you know, penguins and octopuses and all that stuff. Incredibly sexy. <laughs> exactly! That's what I was thinking. That's such a... Such a James O'Grady thing. Uh, I think I need to take the top level here. I realize I haven't selected any um, special weapons. Let me see what I have. Excuse me while I get up, walk over to the master system and press the pause button. Yeah. Yeah, it would be fun to stream those games as well, but uh, again, it would be a lot of tedious, uh, you know, progress runs like what I'm going through with uh, doing uh, Grady's Five on Kenny Rins's Twitch channel. Cause, uh, yeah, you just can't walk into a game like that and expect to uh, get a good clear down without much practice. Although Ben did it yesterday, but then he's Ben, you know, that's what he does.
There, uh, there is one shoot 'em up that I'm very good at right now, but uh, the problem is it isn't out yet, and um, I still got my uh, world record on it broken by by my friend, uh, my programming friend. But uh, yeah, I'm almost. He broke he he broke my points record and then he broke my uh, maximum shield time record, which is a thing in that game. And well, let's just get the tornadoes out. But I'll I'll, I'll get back to him. I'll I'll, uh, I'll break it again. There has to be at least one game that I should one shoot 'em up that I should uh, that I uh, have to be the master at. The master at. So even if that's uh, even if if that's the game that I designed myself. <laughs> Which is a funny thing, actually. If you design a shooter or a video game, oh, I, so the, the I should have taken the down route. It's just funny if you design a shoot 'em up yourself. Of course, you're totally in tune with the systems because you designed them. So it's totally intuitive to yourself. So that already helps. And then I've designed the stages in it. Which means I don't really have much in the way of uh, memorizing to do anymore. Because I more or less know what's uh, what's coming. And I know when to use my uh, special weapons and stuff. And when, when not to use it. Once you see Space Invaders. <laughs> what a crazy hypothetical. Yeah. <laughs> Once you see a game that basically loops infinitely, well, you can if you uh, if you reach a uh, reach a point where the programmers didn't bother anymore, right? If you reach the kill screen. GG last. Yeah. Too much to uh, much to uh, my shock. I found out that uh, M2 is actually developing a sequel to GGLS2 in GGLS3. Like a brand new Game Gear a last game. But of course not for the Game Gear. They're just doing that for modern systems. Yeah, I don't think they're uh, releasing it on the Game Gear, game gear card. This, this guy again. I'm not gonna try and fight him because uh, they. Oh, I have to fight one because they take out stupid, take off stupid amounts of health. There you go. Ah! Nearly. No. One timing mistake. Oh, the uh, Sega Master System. Um, Space Invaders. Can you? Is there an end to that? Is there a proper end to that? Give me some health. Oof! Bruce Lee uh, on the C64 game. On the C64. I mean, there's a Spectrum version, of course. I think that's the one Ben played, but I... Played Bruce Lee back uh, back in the days on the C64. The the dungeon or the castle music in this game is just great. I remember that when I was uh, doing this game weekly, back when I had more time to stream, I remember that I uh, this tune got stuck in my head for days, for the whole week, pretty much. So yeah, this uh, deserves a uh, capital C, capital H, capital O, capital O, capital N. Oof! Got him. So yeah, I'm still currently in my mind deliberating right now if I should uh, go for two hours today or should get back to editing video wizards. Is that... that that will have to come out before the end of the month. It's coming along very nicely. 
All right, yeah, let's uh, let's give it another run. See if I can do better this time. If I get one elixir here, I'm not going to do the mouseman thing again. No, I'm not getting it. The week before minder. Which minder? You did it a couple of times, right? Or are you? Do you mean the uh, not not minder streaming, but the pre-recorded video? All right. Yeah. Let's just uh, let's get a cure first. And then go back in with Mouseman and buy some elixirs. It is what it is. This uh, this place is dangerous. Whoa! This place is dangerous. Don't worry about me. I've got this. Oh, you work for a her horrible little company? Better, I hope now, Hayes. It sounds better, by the because you you got to play Street Fighter at work, so you you probably work in a in a better place now. He's in a better place. Oddly enough, you would think that by now I would have had more heart containers, right? I think I only got two additional ones. On top of the two that you start out with when, once you get cursed. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, let's give it another go. Yammer on while, uh, while I go and buy my elixirs. Not exactly the uh, neighborhood uh, convenience store, is it? You have to go f well out of your way to buy some elixirs in this game. Across the border. Castlevania heart containers. Hold on. I need to uh, get, get through this bit of life. Those are always useful. Castlevania heart containers. I only know of the uh, heart currency in Castlevania, not exactly containers. Zelda heart containers, those are uh, more along these lines. Cruddy little company and ended up walking out with the rest of the IT team. Nice. That's great, man. Really happy for you. The people you work with make such a big difference. If you uh, if you work with a bunch of people that uh, that are get enthusiastic to play some Street Fighter uh, around lunchtime, that uh, can't be the worst place in the world. And good on you uh, and the IT department uh, for walking out on mass. That uh, that sort of thing might uh, might always be quite empowering. Yeah, I think we all worked uh, for crappy organizations at one point of our lives. Although I haven't... Yeah, no, I did... Oh, yeah, I had one terrible temp job uh, that I tried to take on seriously because I needed a steady income to uh, get, uh, get visa papers done and everything for my wife. But it was just too horrible to put up with. It was at the... Uh, the uh, Dutch local Dutch copyright organization for music, uh, like uh, like like uh, you know, um, what's the what's the party? What's the international party for for such things? But the peep and I mean the, the the work was just regular admin work, you know, re regular administration work. I I don't really had trouble with that, but just the people were terrible there, like the grumpiest. Uh, most unlikable colleagues you could could imagine. Basically, non-welcoming to anybody new that joined uh, the department. You know. Basically, giving you a shit time of general principle. So I, uh, I couldn't stay there. I had to find another. Uh, I had to f find another job to take on while uh, 
while I was trying to get something steady. Haha, <laughs> yeah. The music. I like to think uh, that uh, the video with this podcast has a similar effect on people. I hope so. Crap! We're all right. Hey, forty! Thanks for joining, and thanks for thanks for liking our podcast and listening to it in the first place. Yeah, sorry to keep uh, everybody waiting that long this month. Um, of course, Ben was uh, was out uh, judging in Abu Dhabi, and uh, and then we kind of felt like, yeah, let's not rush anything this time. Just when we have time, let's not stress out over it because we had other, both of us had other things going on as well. Same with uh, with editing right now. I have so much other things going on that usually I just drop everything else I'm doing to edit the video or this podcast for almost a week straight. And this time I just uh, I just couldn't do that logistically, so I'm taking a bit longer than usual editing even. So, which means that it's now over halfway through the month and there's still no new video or this podcast. But it's coming, I assure you. Ah, oh, right, yeah. It can be tough, actually, to <laughs> for me as well to check people's live stream. Like, oh, I want to, you know, I want to check out this person's live stream. But then, you just your schedule has to uh, has to sync up as well, right? We're all grown ups here with uh, busy busy private lives. I don't know how this. Uh, for you guys, but I definitely don't have a, a ton of time on my hands. Nice. That's great, man. Happy you enjoy it. No, really, that uh, makes me feel good as well. I guess video wizards can get a little bit more silly than Kane Rins from time to time. Siri, you were not supposed to catch that. So there's a lot of crazy stuff we're talking about this month again. November 1992. Today I saw uh, a tweet that tomorrow... Tomorrow marks the day that uh, George Bush Sr. welcomed, uh, changed the guard to, o handed over the uh, keys to the White House to Bill Clinton. Which is also something we're talking about on, uh, on this month's podcast. Mmm, nice. Yeah, definitely. What, uh, what, post what podcast is that, 40? <laughs> Somebody's getting topical. Yeah, it's very top. It was, was quite crazy actually because we, as we tend to do, we randomly pick that month, and then uh, there were some interesting parallels uh, with the present once again. Mm. You know, it's really nice to uh, be back streaming uh, for a bit again. I've been cancelling my streams for a while, for a couple of weeks, ever since we did the, the Charity Museum stream. And then it becomes this thing like, yeah, do I really have time to stream? Maybe I should just cancel today as well. 
But then uh, you t tend to forget how much fun it is actually. To catch up with everybody again. And just play some goddamn video games. Because I've been... Uh, in, s in terms of... Uh, playing video games, I've mostly been navel gazing hard. And playing my own stuff. Huffing my own farts. To be honest, it's because we... Uh, we need to test what we're making, of course. Testing. Building and testing. Building and testing. Building and testing. That's how it goes. Okay. Right, you sat in for Leon when he was one away one time. Ah, right, yeah, yeah. Leon was started out on Gamer Dork. He told me about that, yeah. I wasn't really up on video game podcasting back then. But that's uh that's some some veteran podcasting stuff. Uh let me see. Oh yeah, I need to change back into Lion Man. He ain't lying. Or he is lying be specific. Neil and Jay, right, yeah. Yeah, sadly Jay is not on a whole lot of Kanerin's podcasts nowadays. He's, he got, this year he got on more because we were talking about newer stuff. He doesn't really like to talk about old stuff like uh, like me. But um, he's of course on the uh, monthly Patreon podcasts uh, that, that Kanerin's does as well. Just the, the monthly chats between him and, and Leon. Hmm, yeah. It is time consuming. Definitely. The whole uh, Video Wizards thing was... Uh, we started this this year in the uh, Notorious 2020. And it kind of came about... Like Ben uh, approached me. And I just found out that I was uh, doing only half of the Canary shows that I w had been doing um, the year before. Like I, on, in 2019, I did 20 Canary podcasts with the uh, with the crew, and then I was scheduled in for only 10 the next year afterwards. And Leon assured me it wasn't a slight, but uh, just because of the type, kind of a bit of a different focus in in the games that they were covering. And I believe him. I mean, even just for my sanity, I believe him. For the sake of my sanity. So and, th and then at the same time, which was kind of serendipitous, uh, Ben approached me with the idea for vi for video wizards, and that sounded like the greatest thing ever. So I was on board straight away. I'm still kind of uh, flattered and honored that uh, of all people he could have podcasted with, he uh, he approached me because I love podcasting. I love doing it, but I don't consider myself a great speaker or especially great at podcasting. Tra Traditionally, uh, I'm more of a writer, actually. I, I much prefer to write write down my thoughts and my opinions um, and analysis so, so I can actually you know, do retakes, mull things over, change some wording here and there. You can't do that when you're speaking live. You blurt something out, and maybe, if you're lucky, the podcast editor fixes uh, up some stuff. But especially if you're not editing yourself, you don't have that, uh, that kind of safety net. But yeah, I don't consider myself a great speaker, uh, but I, I just find it fun to do. Yeah, Leon has uh, such a silky smooth voice. He's, he's great, yeah. Death pen, Mickey takes, yeah. Yeah, I, I have a appreciation of that as well. Straight faced, uh. Straight faced japery. Thank you, thank you, James. That's nice of you to say. You know, pod podcasting with uh, with Ben makes it easy actually because uh, it's just very very easy to talk to and uh, we gel well when we uh, we do video with this together. It's uh, it's crazy because we start recording those podcasts like you know my time uh, mainland European time usually around nine in the evening and then it's like four or five a.m. in the morning when we stop talking and 
you just can't believe like two people can have such long conversations, like extended conversations for that long. Like I don't think I <laughs> I ever talk to anyone that long in uh, in succession. Not even my wife. <laughs> That's very nice of you guys. I get I get better at it, but um, I also found it always found it a little bit intimidating to speak English in the in the presence of native English speakers because it made me you know me and my wife speak English at home all the time because uh, and but English is neither neither one of our native tongues but I always get a little bit little bit more self-conscious when I speak English with or to native English speakers because then I start really like thinking and uh, uh mm, thinking am I using the correct word here am I not messing up the grammar even though I'm, I'm fairly confident with my English it's uh there's a different layer when you when I speak with native English speakers Ooh. Chaos. Three enemies at the same time. It doesn't get much crazier than that in this game. That's funny, right? You don't exactly get swarmed by enemies in this game. But single enemies can be... Because of the, your sh the short reach of most of your weapons, single enemies can be a greater threat. Like, you would have... If this would have been Ghouls and Ghosts, you would have, like, taken that bat out already from a distance. But then, three or four more bats would be swooping in on you. Preferably um, appearing out of thin air right in front of you. Spawning right, almost right on top of you. Thanks, man. Oh! Here we go again. Oh, no! I was being all nonchalant, like, oh yeah, this time uh, I'm going to do great here. Let's just try not to die here. Maybe that's a, that's a good objective to have. Ah! There we go, one elixir gone. Let's hope it's only one. Let's hope I can get a refill. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, someone like Leon is especially eloquent, of course. Um, I, I think in English I lack his uh, extensive vocabulary. Whoa! With, uh, with Ben, it's just... Uh, Never a thing. It's just always just fun times. Not to say anything. Not to slight Ben's vocabulary. That's not what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's strange actually, right? When you think about it, like why would I be so into the idea of podcasting if I don't especially consider myself like a great, great speaker or anything like that? <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Something about it's just really fun to do. Just talking the co conversational style. I would I would hate to do to have to do a podcast without any speaking partners, like doing it all by yourself. But just the conversational, just having these kinds of conversations on these podcasts that you don't typically tend to have with a lot of people. You know, going into talking about games on a little bit more of an analytical, deeper level. Oh, got him. Do I have any weapon selected at the moment? Oh, I think I'm uh, making the same mistake here again. I should take the bottom... Uh, the bottom walkway. He tried to snipe me from the back, but I wasn't having it. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so you're playing the remake, right? But you can switch that back to the uh, vintage graphics. Nice. 
me also, I think uh, Wonder Boy on Monsterland. In Monsterland uh, was the first uh, past the original Wonder Boy that I played, uh, also in the Amiga. Yeah, at a friend's house. And then, um, of course, uh, Wonder Boy Arcade, like the original game, with the skateboard and uh, the stone hatchets and all that stuff. That was the very first one, and that, that might have been the first character-based um, side-scrolling platformer game that I was conscious of before uh, before Super Mario Brothers. Backland, I don't think I've ever seen back in the days, and then, but then you had Moon Patrol, which is also a bit of a side-scrolling platform game because you have to jump over these pits in the in the ground. Um, it's just that you're you're of course. Uh, you're conducting a vehicle. You're controlling a vehicle rather than a, a person. With stubby legs. But yeah, I've, uh, maybe it's because of, of being so impressed by the original Wonder Boy back in the days, but I've always had a, a real soft spot for this series. Even though I never had a Master System or a Mega Drive until uh, much more recent. But there was always something when I was playing the Amiga, Wonder Boy, Monsterland, and stuff. Like there was always something that I really liked about the the style of these games. The stabbiness, the uh, the bouncing coins. Ever since Monsterland, that's been a staple, right? <laughs> yeah, six hours on a Saturday night, and then it gets later and later, and uh, the voices get more AS ASMR-like. We have to speak softer and softer, especially Ben, uh, in order not to wake anybody up. Okay, okay. Well, doing a little bit better than last time, but uh, this is the ninja castle we're talking about. Look at the punishment this thing takes. Okay, corner trapped him. Yeah. It does. It, it it is satisfying when you uh, hit those enemies at exactly the right time. It's a simple thing. It's, it's very simple mechanics, but it's uh, very satisfying at the same time. Aha! Oh, that didn't kill him. It's like uh, bad dudes versus dragon ninja here. So am I? Ah, oh, nice refill. So am I looking at this correctly and are they wearing shades? Or is it just dark masks and you can't see their eyes? No, they're not wearing like air zonk like shades, right? Yeah. Yeah, I... I bef before I got an actual master system and I had the... Uh, I got the Wii. I bought the master system version of, uh, of Wonder Boy on the, on the Wii Virtual Console. I had to. Game with uh, special memories. It's a, it's a, it's a great, uh, great port actually. The Master System port, yeah. This game is in need of some more lasers, preferably hit scan, insta kill, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The green ones take more punishment. Whew! Touch! Okay, now that we got two of these, that take multiple hits. But there we go. So this bit is pretty damn hard, actually. Oh, the Samurais. Okay, the, the tornado seems to be uh, quite useful against them. But there's more of them. I probably don't have enough tornadoes to take care of them. Look at the overgrown bonsai tree over there. Dan Daniel LaRusso would be proud. Or maybe he would be disgusted by the size of it. Where we kick the competition. 
I think he's hopping away just in time. So I probably have to just corner him. Yeah, that, that hit him. Okay. There we go. There we go. You have to be pretty up close and then and then hit him. All right. All right. Okay. Not bad. Whew. Oh yeah. Same here. <laughs> Very gun shy, yeah. He's not the uh, Miyamoto Musashi kind of uh, samurai, you know? He's like, "Nope. Nope." Oh, these ones, they, th they throw energy uh, orbs as well. Some orbs. Oh, we get all this stuff at the same time. Nice. Okay, so I had to get hit by something at some point. The boss here must be uh, a nightmare as well. If I make it that far. So if I'm not making this one this time, I think I'll probably... Oh, he's out of here? He's gone? Nice. Spawned off screen. So if I'm, if I'm not making this run to the boss, um, I'll probably cut the stream and go back to editing video visits because it just has to be done. But then I might actually just have to roam and explore the world. Oh yeah! Oh, they hit you from the top. Now I remember what this bit was so tricky. I can't... I probably have to catch it while jumping or something, the shuriken. Because they go right over my shield. There's actually... You know, not fully protected. There's actually a proper... Hitbox there, or hurt box. Same, right? Yeah, I mean, this w music was in my head all week. When I was uh, playing a lot of this game. Okay. Just snipe me with a shuriken. Yeah, I remember this this part is where I slowly lost a lot of life. Just with those uh with the shuriken. So I'll probably I'll probably have to jump when I see the shuriken coming to catch it with my shield. But when you also have to fight these uh armor clad samurai dudes. It's not easy, but I still have one elixir. So let's see. Ah blue one. Yeah, fish Oh yeah. Okay, uh, at least a full refill. What's this? Okay. He's gone. Let me uh, see if I have some uh, wicked weapons that I could be using. The little one is playing Beat Saber. And requested to watch. Nice. All right. Yeah, that's that's more important than watching uh, watching somebody that's not kin play something uh, something else. So yeah, thanks for joining, Forty. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, do come back if you. I don't know if you stream as well, but if you do, I'll uh, I'll try and uh, and catch some of your streams as well. Take care. Yeah, it is. This is the thing, right? With this game, like those. Uh, they they do love to repeat. Um, Repeat assets uh, and, and make these uh, dungeons go on for quite a while. Okay, so I have no, lo no, lo no more elixirs, so I need to be very careful here. If I get more of those... Yeah, there we go. And I, I never not get hit by those shuriken, it seems. Okay, almost gone. This might be the exact spot where I died uh, last time. Yeah, that's it. Maybe I should have just went through the door. Maybe that was the boss. That could have been the boss. But yeah, look at my health situation. That wasn't great. Alright. So, I think next time I'm going to try and not assault the ninja castle head on. But going to roam the world a little bit and see if I can get better gear and become stronger. Because I feel like I'm a little bit underpowered getting here. 
<laughs> Absolute bollocks, yeah. Yeah, so, uh... Like, like 40, I'm taking my leave right now. Going back to, uh, to podcast editing. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's been really good getting back to this again. Uh, I've, uh, I didn't realize how much I had actually missed this. So next week, more Wonder Boy 3. Let's keep it up. Uh, yeah, like I said, probably will try and find better gear somewhere in the world. There might be, now that I can change into different shapes, there might be spots that I've missed somewhere. And that allow me to uh, become a little bit stronger before I go back into the Ninja Castle. Not sure the issue is solely being underpowered. You being underpowered. Yeah, you're welcome, man. I mean, I think that that's v very much uh, the issue. I mean, yeah, there's there's stuff flying at you, but if you have better armor and you do more damage, then you take less damage. You know, that's just the kind of game this is. But I know what you're getting at, case up. So thanks everybody for uh, for coming along on the ride, and uh, yeah, really enjoyed this. And catch you next time. Bye-bye. Peace.